in this video I will show you a circuit in which we will have a pure inductor pure inductor that means the internal resistance of this inductor will be equal to zero that means the internal resistance that means the resistance between the turns of this inductor will be equal to zero let's say the inductance of this inductor is L I am supplying this inductor with an alternating voltage V the value of V is equal to V M sine omega T see as I am applying an alternating voltage that means it will have an waveform of this shape okay this is a pure sine wave in this circuit I will show you the equation of alternating current I after that I will show you the phase difference between voltage and currents after that I will draw the phase or diagram at last I will show you the equation of instantaneous power and average power in my first video I will talk about alternating current I and the phase difference and in the next video I will show you phase diagram and the average power and instantaneous power absorbed by this inductance now let me proceed with the circuit now consider a pure inductor with inductance L is, is connected to an alternating voltage source V V equal to V M sin omega T as our V will be a pure sine wave that means of this waveform that means it will create an alternating current I flowing in this circuit let's say the current is small I as we have alternating voltage that means our change of current D I of D T in this circuit will not be equal to zero when the change of current through an inductor is not equal to zero it develops a back EMF which will oppose the main supply voltage and that back EMF is denoted with VL and the VL is given by L into DI by D and this VL the back EMF or the voltage that is developed across the inductor will oppose the main supply voltage therefore if I apply KVL in clockwise direction in the circuit I will get V minus VL will be equal to 0 we calculate the voltage developed in an inductor by using this formula V minus L into DI of DT which will be equal to 0 now we have a V equal to Vm sine omega t and if I take this into right side I will get L di by dt now if I keep this di in one side and take all other quantities in the right side I will get Vm divided by L sine omega t d t see we have d i in the left side if I integrate both sides I will get integration of d i will give us a value of current i which will be equal to p m divided by l integration of 0 to t sine omega t d t see here if I integrate the sine omega t you may know that if we have sine a x d x we will get cosine a x by a in front of it there will be a minus sign so here I will get v m by l minus cosine omega t divided by omega okay I can write down our alternating current I equal to Vm divided by omega L minus cosine omega t if you know the conversion from sine to cosine you may know that minus cosine omega t is equal to sine omega t minus 90 degree so I can write our alternating current I equal to Vm divided by omega L 
sin omega t minus 90 degree and here this omega l will be denoted as x l sin omega t minus 90 degree from which I can write down our alternating current I equal to I m sin omega t minus 90 degree where our maximum value of alternating current will be equal to Vm divided by xl or Vm divided by omega l the xl is known as inductive reactance I will talk about inductive reactance in a separate video okay so in case of a pure inductor our alternating current i will be equal to i m sin omega t minus 90 degree when we apply an alternating voltage v equal to v m sin omega t let's say this is our equation number one and this is our equation number two and this is the current equation and this is the voltage equation of a pure inductor when we apply a sinusoidal voltage now let me show you the phase difference between the two alternating quantities our alternating voltage is given by v equal to v m sin omega t and our alternating current i is given by i m sin omega t minus 90 degree here I am is given by V m divided by omega L usually the value of omega L is greater than 1 therefore the magnitude of alternating current will be smaller than the magnitude of alternating voltage now to find the phase difference at first I have to compare the voltage and current equations with alternating waveform xt equal to a m sin omega t plus minus phi naught here you will see the initial phase of the alternating voltage phi v is equal to zero and the initial phase of the alternating current i is equal to minus 90 degree as the initial phase of the alternating voltage is zero degree and the initial phase of the alternating current is minus 90 degree therefore it is obvious that the alternating voltage V will lead the alternating current I by 90 degree now let me draw the waveforms to justify my statement in the y axis I will take voltage and current and in the x axis I will take omega t v equal to vm sin omega t that means at this will be the origin of the voltage from this point to 90 degree it will get its positive maximum let's say plus vm from this 90 degree to another 90 degree i will get zero from this point to this point i will get negative maximum minus vm from 270 degree to 360 degree I will get second zero if I add these points I will get our alternating voltage V now let me draw the current see I equal to I m sin omega t minus 90 degree as the initial phase is negative that means the origin of the alternating current will be here from this point to 90 degree I will get positive maximum here I will get zero of the alternating current from this point to 90 degree I will get negative maximum and from this point to another 90 degree I will get zero so if I add these points I will get alternating current I if I add these points I will get alternating voltage V now let me draw the current and voltage waveforms
so this will be our alternating voltage v and this will be our alternating current i this is its positive maximum value plus i m and this is its negative maximum value minus i m okay see here the origin of the voltage v is 90 degree ahead from the origin of the current see if i want to go from this point to this point i have to move by an angular distance of 90 degree that means as the origin of voltage is 90 degree ahead of the origin of the alternating current so i can say that v leads i by 90 degree in case of a pure inductor in a pure inductor voltage leads current by an amount of 90 degree in my next video i will show you how to draw the phasor diagram and the value of instantaneous and average power absorbed by the inductor okay that's it thank you